so all good uh, so hi all thank you uh, for joining this session and welcome so today we are going to talk about the the life cycle services and the devops uh, for t365 uh, as some of you a lot of you are aware that these tools uh, before d365 were not really mature in fact didn't even exist and uh, in the and now the way uh, microsoft is progressing they have uh, uh, not only created these tools uh, but they have also provided a very clean and clear interface where you can uh, start using these tools so i would be showing you uh, just a high level overview just uh, so that you're aware of uh, uh, what are the capabilities what, what are the uh, activities you can do in these tools and uh, this would be a very high level overview uh, bird's eye view i would say and it's not a deep dive uh, but of course you can uh, post your questions and i'll try to answer uh, with, uh, with whatever i can so moving forward um, about me, I've been uh, in Dynamics world for almost 13 years now and currently working for Infosys. And I'm very interested in talking about ALM and uh, uh, one of my first task in uh, back in uh, 448 2009 was uh, creating ALM tools completely on command line. And this is where it uh, I I'm more excited to talk about these tools because I remember the pain of creating uh, those tools and now they are just out of the box uh, uh, in a very easy configurable uh, GUI interface. So that's just, uh, that's uh, really uh, uh, good to see the evolution that we have been uh, seeing in front of uh, uh, ourselves. <clears throat> so uh, let's now dive in. Uh, or I would say, let's uh, move on. So uh, who is this slide for? It's uh, uh, the, the tool LCS is for project managers, the functional consultants, the technical consultants. The project managers uh, can set the milestone dates and uh, uh, the functional consultants can use it for the subscription estimation, the issue search, so our uh, BPM libraries and the technical consultants for environment management like uh, package deployment or uh, uh, servicing uh, other parts like installing license, etc. Uh, again, uh, this is more about uh, what you can do for project management. As I said, it's uh, setting up milestone date, uh, setting up users, setting up methodologies and uh, uh, for solution management, like the issue search and uh, uh, uploading uh, uh, ISV solutions uh, to LCS, uh, their BPM libraries to the uh, LCS, and of course the environment management. So starting point would be that someone will invite you uh, to an LCS project and uh, on the right hand side, as you can see, there would be an invite user screen. So uh, it, uh, you need to have an organizational email and uh, whoever is the administrator will say, uh, will uh, assign you as, uh, as either a project owner or an environment manager or a project team member operation user. And then uh, an email will be sent to your email ID, uh, which would look like this that you have been invited to Microsoft Dynamics LCS project with the project name and uh, organization. <laughs> so once you set up in LCS, you will be presented with uh, this screen. Typically, you might be uh, 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 associated with multiple projects. Then you would see it here as uh, several types. And once, uh, so in our case, when we say that, OK, now our current project is Dynamics Demo Project, so we'll uh, just click on this tile and it takes to the other screen. <clears throat> now this is the project home screen. Now on the top, you would see the methodology. So uh, the methodology is a set of uh, predefined steps provided by Microsoft. And uh, 
this this is decided at, at the time of project onboarding and uh, you could see that there are several phases to it like the onboarding analysis design and develop and uh, under and each phase has its own set of tasks so for example a deploy and a operate will have a deploy a production environment perform a mock cutover so these these are template tasks giving you uh, outline what to do so you're not going completely blank into a project that uh, okay what's next in our uh, phase and you and you can also see that we uh, you can define on dates so it also gives uh, a kind of project planning and also for project managers to set uh, plan and define tasks accordingly and uh, on your right hand side you can see the environments and uh, keep in mind that these are uh, Microsoft hosted environments and uh, you can have several types of environment like uh, develop and test or a testing environment or uh, and eventually a production environment. Moving on, uh, you will have the menu uh, on top, the breadcrumb bar there right up top. And uh, you may uh, for different projects, different type of projects, you may have different view. So uh, either you will find all your options in the menu or if you scroll to your right, you will find uh, these tiles. So uh, the next, so in the menu, you have several options like the alert services. The alert services are, uh, are a regularly alert submissions page where you will see uh, various uh, regulatory uh, requirements that are uh, there. So any changes to that. So an example is, for example, the India regulatory requirement requires display place of supply along with the name in the state. So Microsoft will make this change and upload this as a package. And then you could also see on your list, okay, yeah, for my organization, this, uh, this change is an impact and I need to train my users for the upcoming update. The next is the business process modeler. Uh, this is where you can create, view, and modify repeatable implementations. Uh, so, and uh, and this is how uh, uh, the BPM library looks like with the several uh, of its uh, uh, processes. Moving on, uh, now these are the cloud hosted environments. This is where uh, you would see your uh, all the environments uh, that are hosted on your cloud i mean your organization's cloud <clears throat> using uh, the as your uh, 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 you know uh, your subscription the next is code upgrade this is more uh, used by the isv partners who are developing products for dynamics 365 uh, or uh, or any customer who is upgrading from a previous version of AXA, for example, AX2009 or 2012 to uh, D365. So a code upgrade uh, screen would look like this, that where you can see uh, what uh, it will generate a report, it will uh, generate analysis report, and then it will also create a metadata uh, uh, set of files. So all your upgraded code you can uh, download it as a zip file. Moving on, next is issue search. So this is where uh, this is where functional consultants. So uh, anything, any issue that you face, a customer reports an issue, or when you're doing a, 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 a test, you find some issue. So you can come up and search here. So for example, I search for products and then it showed me several results out of it. So now from this, I can understand, okay, this is a uh, uh, issue identified by Microsoft. It is already there. And then uh, we can see whether it was released or it is going to be released in upcoming versions. And then we can all plan our, uh, and uh, we can plan our implementation according to it. We can tell the customer, we can inform the customer that the, the issue uh, that you're facing is identified by Microsoft and is available for next release. <coughs> Support, so if you find an issue while working in an implementation project, you can also report this to Microsoft via support. 
and uh, you can uh, submit those tickets to Microsoft and then Microsoft will respond and do a communication with you. Uh, system diagnostics for uh, if any environment related uh, uh, metrics. So this is where you see uh, all uh, the environment uh, related uh, logging that is happening. So you can see in the dashboard and then you can individually go into the and uh, for example jobs collectors and also generate reports related to any blocking SQL queries uh, like that. <coughs> Uh, asset library. Asset library is the place where you are uploading your artifacts. You can see that there are several uh, uh, asset types. So if there is any BPM artifact, then you could find it in the BPM artifact folder. If there is any uh, database uh, data package or a database backup, you would find in the data package and database backup. And then there is software deployable packages. So in, gen in general, we have two types like a service update. Service update is like uh, if Microsoft is releasing say 10.0.13, so you will find it here and then uh, you can apply to your environments or it could be your customizations or ISV solutions that you have packaged it uh, into a zip file. You have to upload it here. So uh, once you get a say a deployable package from your uh, partner ISV solution or it could be that you have built. So a build solution will generate a package solution. You will click on add, you will provide a name, add the file and then say confirm. This will upload the file and you would see the entry here. Uh, next is uh, we have seen that there are cloud hosted environments, there are Microsoft hosted environments. And uh, a typical environment page would uh, look like this, where uh, uh, you would have options to start and stop. Now keep in mind, this is only available for uh, the dev environments, but if it's a production environment, you won't find this option. So it's depending on majorly depending on the major uh, environment type. You have option to stop. And then under the maintain, you will have several other options like apply updates. As we have seen in the asset library, you, you have uh, several uh, options like uh, platform updates or uh, package deployments. So you would use the apply updates. Again, based on the environment type, uh, you would have to whitelist certain, and uh, I mean, if you're accessing, then you have to whitelist your IP. This is done via enable access. If you don't whitelist your IP, you won't be able to access these environments. Uh, restart services is for uh, restarting, uh, say, I. So if you're facing an issue with the DIXF service, then you could uh, use this option to restart the service. No need to go inside the environment, log into the environment using an RDP connection and then uh, restart service. You can directly do it from here. Uh, Boof database. So uh, now here you will find several options. Refresh database. So if you want to uh, refresh the database from say environment A to environment B, then you can simply use this option. Again, keep in mind there are certain limitations. You can only do this for T2 environments. Or uh, an example would be from production to UAT, from UAT to config, but you cannot do from UAT to Dave or Dave to UAT. So that's not possible. For that, you need to uh, uh, first export a database and then import into your Dave environment, for instance. Next is import database. As we saw in the asset library, that uh, there is uh, asset type as database backup. So every time we say an export database, uh, what it will do is, for instance, if you have an UAT environment and you say export database, then it will upload it after the backup. It will upload to the asset library. Once it is uploaded to the asset library, you can go back and to import database and then select the particular uh, backup that has been uploaded there. History, so any changes that we do to the environment, 
any uh, package updates that we do are logged in the history and there you can monitor what has been uh, what uh, updates have been done to the environment. As you can see, uh, deployed shows the status of the environment. So if this environment was switched off, then it would have shown as offline or uh, relevant status. If there has been any error, then you could also see that package uh, deployment failed or these kind of errors. Under the login, uh, so this this is where you can find the uh, links. So if you say log on to the environment, it will take you to the, the Dynamics D365 home page. Now, if you if it's a development environment or uh, uh, say a T2 environment, then you could also uh, access it via RDP. Uh, if you click in this case demo one, uh, then it will download an RDP file and then you can find the username and the passwords uh, here. Moving on, now we are talking about Azure DevOps. So it is a set of tools used to plan, develop, and deliver. Again, you would be invited to a project uh, by the uh, administrators. Once you're invited, you would see this as your home page. You, typically, you may find one project or the several projects. And uh, once uh, you log into your particular project, then uh, you're going to see this page. So on your left hand side, you see there is an overview. Uh, in the overview, we'll, you'll find the summary of the projects. You can uh, uh, you can configure the dashboard to see what are your open tasks, uh, what are the pending tasks, how much how many hours of task is left, those kind of things. And then under the planning, you would see uh, the boards, work items. There can be several types of work items, say for instance, uh, bug, epic, feature, or a user story. And of course, DevOps provides you uh, uh, with the configuration mechanism where you can uh, create new types of tasks or you can configure the behavior of each of these uh, uh, work item type. In a typical project, you would be mostly dealing with user stories and tasks. And <clears throat> moving on, uh, the boards. So as soon as you create a user story and task, Azure DevOps will uh, can uh, will set it up in the board. I mean, you don't need to do any specific configuration there, and uh, you it will have several states: new, active, resolved, and closed. So these are the default states that you are seeing. But for your project, for your specific specifications, you can also configure all these states. Backlogs, so this is where you're grouping your all your work items into uh, say product backlogs or bug backlogs depending upon your requirement and then you can later also use it for your uh, uh, sprint plans. And uh, once you have created the queries, uh, sorry, work items, you can also query them uh, for, uh, using the queries uh, uh, functionality. It is very much similar, uh, very easy to use. You can, uh, uh, as you can see that you can search on work item type and state. You can also define uh, uh, typical queries using the WIQL framework, which is a query framework for Azure DevOps. Now we go to the develop part where uh, now this is where you see the repository. Uh, repository is the place where whenever a developer makes a check-in uh, to the code, uh, this is where uh, it is going, it is committed to. This is the central place for all your files and uh, change changes that has been done. <coughs> Uh, so you could see the folders on your left hand side and for each selected folder the contents on the right hand side. It can have uh, many folders or uh, it could be a uh, branch from the main branch. So all kind of branching and merging uh, strategies that you you want to have for your organizations. Uh, this is where you find the contents. And uh, with each 
which content you can see the last uh, check in. So every time a developer commits a code, it's called a check in. And uh, it is uh, the last check in for this particular object is uh, shown here. Again, uh, chain sets. So a chain set is a single commit made by the developer to the central repository. So you can view all the commits that have been made uh, for this particular uh, uh, project. Uh, keep in mind, you can also associate work items to these uh, chain sets. So you can also use it uh, for your uh, release notes or, uh, or any other uh, reporting activity. Uh, each each chain set will also contain what files have been checked in. You can also use it for comparison that OK, I want to compare between version one and version two. And uh, this tool will also show off the differences. You can see the differences here as well as the place uh, the developers are using Visual Studio to do the check ins and check out. So there as well, they can see and compare the version history. Uh, moving on. Uh, now we are talking about uh, delivery. Uh, the delivery is handled via pipelines. So you have two types of pipeline, basically the build pipeline and the release pipeline. Uh, Microsoft has again renamed the build pipelines as just pipelines and the release pipelines as releases. So typically a pipeline is a set of configuration defining a set of tasks which would convert your code to a shippable product. So in this case, uh, it is receiving all the artifacts, say your classes, tables, and uh, everything, and then it is creating a model. So as you can see, each pipeline is consisting of several steps like preparing for build, set model versions, and then it will do a build of the solution the database sync and then it's going to deploy the uh, reports in uh, to your build environment and then it will create a package and then publish those packages artifacts into the azure devops uh, system a prerequisite to this uh, pipeline is a build environment so whenever you provision a build environment via lcs what it will do is it will also create this uh, pipeline. Uh, most of the times you don't need to change anything. Uh, you can uh, start using these pipelines right away. So now once your uh, packages are generated, they are uh, you can download the package, upload it to LCS in uh, to the asset library and then uh, start deploying to your other environments. So a typical process would look like that uh, a developer will lock in uh, to the Dave environment. He does his development, makes a check in, makes the commits, and then uh, he comes here. He runs the uh, the build pipeline. The build pipeline will generate those artifacts, and once those artifacts are generated, uh, he would download it and upload it to LCS. And via LCS, he'll start uh, deploying to various environments. Now, uh, these tools are maturing day by day, uh, and we were doing these activities, uh, and we are still doing these activities, but uh, there have been some advance, I would say, some uh, changes uh, to, the, uh, uh, to the Microsoft's offering here. And uh, things like uh, now they have uh, provided under the release that once a build is finished, you can also release it, release it to LCS. So uh, in this case, you can see that uh, they have provided a, 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 a task. So tasks are the templates uh, or, or, or configurations that uh, you can associate, uh, associate to your releases. And then these are uh, repeatedly running. So in this case, the upload task, what is this doing is uploading your uh, build artifact to the LCS asset library. So all, all it needs to know is what connection it needs to connect and uh, what is the project it needs to upload to. And then it will simply download uh, the, uh, 
the deployed artifact and upload it to uh, asset library. Once you have uploaded that, and uh, this is really fresh out of the big uh, uh, open, I would say. Uh, recently, this was uh, made generally available, was deployed to N1. Now, as I said, uh, uh, typically all these steps were done by the developer where he was running the build, he was downloading the artifacts, and then he was uploading to LCS, and then deploying to other environments. Now uh, we can do all these steps automated and uh, 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 and run it into periodic schedules, for example, weekly uh, or monthly based on our requirement. So this is the deploy to environment task, which would deploy it to any of your selected environment where you have to provide a connection, of course, the project and then the environment. And then you have to select which file. So uh, in this case, we can say that whatever the file that has the last build has generated. And then uh, this will upload it to that. What's next to the. Uh, to our LCS is hosted build agents. So as I said, for the build pipeline, uh, the minimum uh, requirement was that we need to have the build environment hosted. So a build environment would uh, you have to request Microsoft to provision it for you, whether on your uh, mostly uh, in fact on your uh, cloud Azure cloud subscription. Uh, a machine would be created and then you will be start using it. With the hosted build agents, what you can do is that you don't need a build environment. You can just uh, subscribe to one of the agents and then uh, uh, start using right away. So it will be hosted on Microsoft environment. And in terms of cards, it will be also pretty cheap because uh, you don't need to worry about uh, switching on and switching off. It will be only running during the duration of the builds and then it will automatically switch off. And what's coming next is the updated developer experience uh, where as we all know that we need a very heavy uh, working virtual machine hosted somewhere either on Microsoft's uh, uh, cloud or our customer's cloud. What Microsoft is working is to uh, make it available via NuGet packages so that it can be installed on your local PC and you can connect to any environment you like. So that was all uh, I uh, in this introduction. Uh, this was a very high level overview. There are a lot of topics uh, we can talk about. There are there are a lot of deep dives we could do. And uh, if you feel that some uh, you will want to uh, talk about a particular topic, please feel to share about that. I'm happy to answer your questions. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Chandra. Uh, so I got one question. Yep. Uh, is what is the significance of BPM and how it is used in real uh, real uh, time scenarios? Uh, so uh, if you talk about uh, BPM, uh, the best scenario to explain this is uh, 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 for the ISPs who are selling their products and uh, they would have uh, these set of uh, configurations and defined processes. And uh, an, an ideal example is that uh, uh, in the past I was working for a product for cable manufacturers and uh, the fiber cable, fiber cable companies would have a very uh, similar set of uh, 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 working uh, configurations. So a BPM would provide with this auto set uh, configurations and then they can start using it as well as it could also provide with uh, them with a set of process documentations that they can follow. Uh, in real life in uh, honestly, I've never seen people using BPM uh, very well in the, the custom projects that I've been involved with. Uh, but if we use it properly, uh, then I think it can be very helpful. And a couple of two questions which I got uh, yep. with the BPM. Uh, 
someone asked when should when should we actually revise the ppm and second question if you want to take both at the same time please the second is uh, who is the primary owner of the ppm the i'll first answer this one the primary owner of the bpm would be the uh, in this case the partner and the isp uh, who are providing the solution okay and uh, are it, uh, can you repeat the other question uh, first ah uh, yes so someone asked uh, when should uh, when should we revise the bpm or modify it, the task within the bpm when should we doing these these things um this is something i have to check uh, i uh, i will come back on this question yes so uh, uh, i can add something over, over here uh, yeah. so for the bpm stuff like it's really depends on the implementation if some process has changed uh, then it's required at that at that step it not necessarily you have to update it on daily basis or occasionally uh, once the process is defined uh, someone can change or update it on demand basis so if we have the process of defining the sales order and we have all the ppm tasks libraries uh, with everything defined sitting over there uh, which can explain as a task guides at the end of the, the, the implementation these can be used as a task guides to how to create a sales order but if microsoft came comes back and add a new functionality in that process at that point we have to update the the ppm uh but hopefully the at that may help to understand or may help to to get the answer but if if someone please, still have any questions uh please feel free to reach out uh we got uh, amar uh, has some question um uh, yeah. please go ahead hi faisal hi chandra uh hey. my question yeah my question was related to the work items of devops you know yeah. there there are some standard uh, work items for example bugs configuration and all that can we create a custom work item for us as well or is it uh, only microsoft provide us this no, we of... can we can we can we can okay. create our custom work items and we can also define custom processes for it okay uh, so uh, uh, in fact in one of the clients place we had created uh, custom work items like uh, uh, for i mean just which was only meant for testers of course there is a test work item but uh, they, this was a, a specific work item where they would they would have to do a testing task and you can also create a documentation type of task and for each task you can define what are configurable steps in the sense that uh, uh, for example a work item can have only three states active in progress uh, resolve but a uh, associated task will have uh, several other states like active in testing uh, and finish so i mean it's, it's all up to the organization and uh, uh, how they want to configure it okay thank you all good uh haven't got any further more questions as of now uh if anyone still questions please go ahead yeah hi faisal hi chandra vishal this side so you talked about uh, you know in the upcoming changes you talked about updated developer experience yep on the last slide can you yep. please share a few more details on how this experience will change for the development team members so uh, it's it's still in uh, uh, you know uh, in development and uh, what i can do is i can share you that uh, slide where uh, or or the, the video where it was discussed uh, <clears throat> basically it's all about uh, as you know that uh, every developer needs a, a virtual machine so uh what this is more about is that using new get packages and visual studio uh you would be able to develop on your own machine so if there is 
there is a lot more details there, but I think uh, you, you can view that video, which I can share you there. So that would be very helpful. OK, great. Thank you. Uh, yes, yeah, so further to that question uh, uh, to Vishal, so as Sandra did mention, every developer, if we if we have five developers, so every developer has to have his uh, his or her own machine to do the development. What Microsoft is building now, uh, rather than using and using the Microsoft hosted or your own hosted uh, VM machines, you can directly install Visual Studio onto your machine and then install the NuGet, uh, NuGet package. Uh, it will behave like you will be using your own machine. You will have all the AOS service directory folders, everything code base sitting into your own machine. <clears throat> so with your Visual Studio, you will have your own Visual Studio, but you will be you will be connecting through all the Microsoft code base from there. OK, that, that sounds great. Hopefully that will have good cost impact also, because right Absolutely. now we're spending heaps on uh, uh, yep. You know, five developers, if you're working with, do you got to have five development machines? Absolutely, yep. and it, it, it will also add to the, the functionality of working offline. Like most of the people, uh, they travel a lot, and if they want to do some development during the flight, so they can just do their development into their own machines. Yeah, and uh, so, not only that, it's also about the developer isolation. So that that has been a very big point for AX even in the previous versions. So uh, developer isolation is a, I would say, a very important uh, thing where each developer is working on their own and not affecting other developers' work. So uh, I think that uh, that is a very key win here in this uh, scenario. Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. Chandra, uh, I would also, I mean, I'm trying to understand if you can in the later sessions cover something on the builds as well, like build packages. Right now, yeah. I'll ask you the question anyhow, but I'm not sure whether you know the details about it or not. So let's say that we have got five or ten work items that go in a single code package, okay, yeah. uh, into the UAT. Out of those, half of it has been passed, cleared to go to, let's say, production but half of them needs to be rolled back. Right now it's a big struggle to you know, push those five which have been passed and roll back the remaining five because they all belong to a single code package. Do you uh, the answer to this is uh, use a branching and merging strategy. So uh, typically you would have, uh, so all the developers will uh, check into a dev branch and uh, say there are five check-ins and uh, you realize that only three have passed so you will push the three to the next branch probably that's your main branch i mean you can call it the with whatever naming convention uh, so you would only push those three uh, chain sets as we say and then uh, from there you can take on to the next level yeah so two issues with that Chandra, one will have to prepare the code package again with the past items. Uh, number two, if there are dependencies with the other uh, items which have failed, like if they yeah. have common objects, then it will be a bit of problem, isn't it? Yes, it would be a problem. And uh, uh, you should try to make it simple. Uh, uh, the less number of branching, the better it is. And uh, I would rather question that why do you have the scenario where you have five check-ins or five work, uh, I mean, uh, objects, and only three have passed. I would rather question the developer that why is that scenario coming? So uh, you should not have that scenario ideally. Of course, that that's uh, in the real world, that's not uh, the thing. So one way would be branching and merging. Um, yeah. OK, thank you. Uh, Kamal got a question. Kamal, please go ahead. Uh, thanks, Faisal. I, I didn't have any question. I just wanted to thank Chandra for doing this. Uh, this was a really helpful session uh, and really well prepared. So uh, I'm expecting you know further uh, deep dive sessions from Chandra on this topic. So thank you, Chandra, for doing this. Thank thanks, you. Kamal. 
uh, anyone else got any question just one follow up question to what you were saying fessel avab yeah. so yeah. Uh, you mentioned that in yeah. future microsoft might roll out um, the possibility of installing the visual studio and the databases on your own uh, laptop rather than hosting it in a vhd or on a vm in azure so is there going to be a change in the system resource requirement as well or are they pretty much going to stay the same resource requirement as in the memory and the cpu cores required uh, as of now what i have heard uh, because uh, joris from microsoft he is working on to this one so when i talked to him last night he said uh, we don't have a clear picture about the resource requirement from the machine point of view but they are still working on to this one uh, it's it will not it will not be much different over there couple of other questions which i discussed with him uh, how we are going to manage about uh, the code check in and if if i'll be doing anything so this is what this is all all still not clear uh, they are still working on to these options there are some challenges so back to your original question so the resources are, uh, there will not be any significant change cool all right because at the end of the day that could be a new get service package which is which, uh, which already is in a very small size and uh, right now once we see the machines there we also have a aws service directory uh, where we have all the uh, application foundation and all the tags and other other modules sitting over there so we may not need all the packages at the same time as as we do uh, sometimes we are implementing where we don't need to to, to reference the text or the retail packages but these are sitting mm -hmm. over sitting there uh, doing nothing and just occupying the space so uh, this will be on on demand if you need those packages you will download those ones through a binary separately and if you need to reference uh, you can you can refer those one later but you you will have two code base packages two of different folders you one is the microsoft code folders and then you will have your own separate for code folder which will uh, will which will only contain your code changes not the baseline ones right so no more packages local directory containing everything no 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 not more yes so this way we will have less space and we require less resources into our own machine cool looking forward to that yeah it sounds good sounds very really interesting that like microsoft has been spending a lot of time on this one uh, they did some uh, demos uh, earlier but there were some challenges and microsoft your team is still working on to these ones right yeah. thanks i think that would uh, really revolutionize uh, uh, ax development uh, yeah if they if they leave any development for us because right now everyone is going for no code low code <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's also true so, yeah uh, if we if we still have any development tasks by that time then it will be revolutionized otherwise it will be just to we will just be using some some fun stuff yeah. creating our own tools and something like this yeah now all good thank you so much chandra uh, i don't see for any further questions coming up but it was a very informative very very detailed session uh to me especially i uh, have revised so many things here and uh, it was a very good session for the people who are looking for the lcs for the first time uh yeah so if you if you guys have any suggestions on the session please feel free to come forward uh you can talk to us on any session we will keep doing this on weekly basis uh may not be happening all the all the weekends we will not be doing sessions uh, alternate weeks and we are also planning to host some sessions on to how to prepare for your exams and certifications so we uh if if we have fast some certifications and exams so we are preparing for the sessions and then we we start sharing that knowledge and will help everyone here uh, to get over those exams as soon as possible and with good marks so uh, with that one thank you again again today 